Uh, you get an A plus. I oh, know, dude. I really thank you. I got an A plus. Whoa. Yeah, he, the, the person becoming that, and there and there is there is right there. There is uh, it, 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 there's, there's a little boy, uh-huh. right there, in a, in a, in a, in, in, in casting in a, in a diamond in like in a dimension coming into it, right there. But that's the wizard, right there, and it's, and it's he's going like this, and he's trying, and everything go, and he's becoming it. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh, so you know, because I, I I thought um I thought I see I it's amazing that you thought it was a wizard because um it is a wizard. You're watching the Kate Fox Show. I'm Kate Fox, and today I am here with the one and only Ivy Supersonic. Hey, hey, <laughs> and Ivy, you have. I mean, we we're having this great conversation already before we started on camera, but I want to start with your history because you have stuff that's in the news today from things you did twenty. 20- 20 years ago? You know, that was unbelievable. 20 years ago, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, you're in People Magazine. You're in, what, Page Six, uh, The Post. Um, what am I missing? It's true. It's true. Yeah, you know, it's true. You know, it's funny because I I actually wrote um, on my Facebook, like, you know, Kelly Ripa is, is wearing my hat from 16 years ago. It's like in People Magazine right now. And it, it made, like, number one. Like, so so they said that they had 19 costumes. My hat was like number, number one. one. So, and I was like, that's 16 years ago. Then this morning, so it was interesting. Um, I started to write a list and I, I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to see like ex- just a, a list. I love my list. So I was <laughs> writing a list and I said, wait a second. I designed this hat 20 years ago. So it wasn't 16 years ago that she, you know, she wore it then. I designed this hat 20 years ago. And you designed it for who? Well, or who who is famous? Well, who is it famous for being on? <laughs> so, so this one hat that we're talking about. Well, I designed the hat twenty years ago for Pamela Anderson for the MTV Awards, and it was she wore it as September 9th, nineteen ninety nine. That's five nines. Wow. Yeah. So they do say that nine is is a, is a Jesus Christ number when it's like a lot of nines in a row. Yeah, it is. It is. So, um, but anyway, um, so Pam wore the hat. And um, it's just is completely iconic. I always said it was the hat of the century, and it, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. Everybody it is. knows it that is. hat. It is. I, I wish they all knew that I designed that hat. I think if you're my Facebook friend, you know it. I think, yes. I think that uh, people in New York that read probably the the gossip columns, they know it. Um, Correct. Correct. So so what happened was Kelly Ripa. I was then uh, Rita and Kelly. So Pam Anderson after she was. Uh, at the MTV Awards on the 9th, on the 10th, she went on Regis and Kelly. And she she told Regis and Kelly, she said, my friend Ivy Supersonic designed me that hat. So um, in 2003, I got a phone call from the show because they knew I designed the hat because she oh, told them. Oh, yes. Okay. So Kelly's um, producer called me and said, Kelly wants to be Pam Anderson for Halloween. Can she borrow a hat from me? So I had the perfect hat. I had a pink feathered hat. Um, which is a Louis Vuitton hat. So Louis, the publicist for, it's crazy. This is a crazy story. <laughs> this is the craziest story ever. The publicist, so, and it's like every, there's so much. So I just, I designed all these hats for Snoop Dogg. I met Snoop Dogg at his hotel. We love Snoop. We, yeah, we do. We love Snoop. So I met Snoop at his hotel. It was July 99. So I, I somehow this publicist, everybody knew, I don't know, a publicist for Louis Vuitton called me up. She said, can you come over here? I was like, okay, yeah. So I went over to her house and she's like, listen, I work for Louis Vuitton. I'm the Louis Vuitton publicist and I want to give you this Louis Vuitton material. And can you make me a hat for the Louis Vuitton classic car show? And I was like, okay. She goes, little Kim is coming and I want to take photos of little Kim in the Louis Vuitton hat. And but she's like, don't tell anybody I'm giving you this fabric. I was like, okay. So I don't know. <laughs> so I took the fabric. I made this awesome hat, this big pink feathered Louis Vuitton hat with washing crystal. And then um, I made it and it was September 99 and I went to the um, event and uh, I remember I was waiting. She said, Drina De Niro was coming and, and little Kim and there was no, little Kim never showed up. So I said, listen, um, I'm going to find little Kim. I'm going to get the, I'm going to get her to wear it. I'm going to get the pictures. And um, I got a call. I was friends with Misa Hilton Brim, who was, um, uh, P. Diddy's, uh, you know, girlfriend she, or wife okay. or whatever. Okay. She had Justin, their baby, you know, they, wow. they should, you know, she was the mama of Justin. 
Justin P. Diddy, you know. So, um, so anyway, so Misa was like, she's doing a shoot with um, Kim and I brought some stuff over and at the time I had my, I had jeans from the IBIB collection where I, that I started in Great Neck in, in 1990. And um, so Misa bought a pair of jeans and um, I really didn't want to sell, you know, I hate selling my stuff because I just know it's worth so much money and it's, it's hard. People don't have that kind of money. Anyway, I sold a pair of the jeans and um, I went to the, the shoot. She said, Little Kim is shooting for Out Magazine. So I don't know if she's gay or not, but anyway, she was on the cover of Out. Okay. So I brought a pair of my jeans. It was like the everything jean. It was, it was, they were just amazing. They were the greatest jeans I, I've ever seen or worn or, or owned and I designed them. So anyway, they took a hundred hours to sew. Not that I sewed them, but um, wow. you know, we had a room full of ladies, you know, seamstresses with the sewing machines. Yeah, I don't like that. So it's too mechanical for me to operate a sewing machine. So anyway, hundred hours, they sewed these jeans. I mean, what could you charge for? Uh, yeah, I mean, so she, little Kim was sweating me for these jeans. She wanted to buy them and I, this is in um, 1999, 20 years ago. So I said at five thousand, I don't know if I had a lot of money. I don't, I don't really know. She, she it was five thousand was too much. I guess she wanted them for free. So anyway, so little Kim is wearing the jeans, and um, they shot it for the cover of Out and my Louis Vuitton hat. So I got her in the hat, and um, I brought my own photographer, Andrew Richard, just because you know I want the photo just in case. So anyway, Andrew gave it to New York Magazine. And they published it October 18th, 99, and um, Out Magazine outed us. So my hat, it just didn't come out and out. The jeans didn't come out. But I had the jeans and the hat. So I don't know. I mean, did I ever wash the jeans after Little Kim? Did it have a Little Kim juice in it? Anyway, I just sold them. So 20 years later, I sold them wow. to um, Gotta Have It Rock and Roll. It's and so, so you sold, you finally sold these jeans. Well, yeah, I, so I sold them for 5000 finally. No, 6000 Yeah, 5000 I don't know. Yeah, to, to Ed, it got to have it, who's auctioning this hat, this big pink feathered Louis Vuitton hat that Little Kim wore and, um, and Kelly oh, Ripa. Okay. But Snoop Dogg wore it in his movie, The East Siders, and um, it's on the box cover. And when I got to meet him at this shoot, um, somehow he was in a jail cell and this photographer was shooting him in my hat and it wound up in Talk Magazine and Time Magazine. Wow. And then um, then I had the pictures and we gave it to uh, like Fashion Wire Daily and the Daily News ran it. And then um, I brought the hat to the Playboy Mansion. And you did all those parties at the Playboy Mansion. Um, well. Or well, fashion shows. What happened? What do we well, call it? Yeah, what happened was this is crazy. Because it's always crazy. <laughs> so I was doing this like naked feathered hat show where all the girls were <laughs> naked, body painted, and um, wearing my hats. And it was at the Barfly. And it was it was October 98. And um, I had Anthony Kiedis body paint the models, Judd Nelson, Malcolm Jamal Warner, um, Mickey Dolenz, um, Ed Louder. Um, yeah, I have Mickey Rourke came to the show. This show was off the friggin' chart for Halloween. So I invited Hugh Hefner, and he was like, um, like he was busy with his party, so he invited me to his party. And then, um, so my party was October 30th, but his was the 31st. So they asked me to, to paint. They wanted me to paint their Playboy models. And like, first of all, at that time, I wasn't painting. I wasn't I was painting. Say, any, were you a painter? I, no, I wasn't. A painter. No, and I didn't who was a painter it wasn't it didn't make a difference you were a dude I said he has a paintbrush he has some paint just put it on <laughs> make it look good if you were good it was good if you sucked it sucked I didn't give a rat's ass I don't care just paint you know what I mean so everybody was painting if you were good but they looked good some people look good and some people look pretty booty looking you know so it just Anthony Kiedis was actually um a real painter and he he did a great job he painted Ivy Supersonic as God on my girls how's that it was good so, I mean, this this show was off the, I mean, it wow. was totally off the chart. Nick Loeb, if you know who that is, he was modeling for me. Um, Doria from Playboy, she was hosting. So anyway, this this event, I, and I never said how I got to the Barfly. Um, Michael Jackson's sister-in-law, Margaret Maldonado, was this publicist, <laughs> and she hooked me up with the Barfly. I know everything, it was just so, it doesn't everything end. It's, with just you, it's, a it's, it's a thing, and it's a name, and it's a, yeah. And, but what I'm going to say now, because we're, all this oh, crazy I didn't stuff get to what happened. happened. Wait, I didn't even tell you what happened. So, we got to the Playboy Mansion, and my, my boyfriend at the time, Jesse Baird, he was a drummer, 
Um, and then he went under the name Dick's Dynamite. Anyway, we were so tired and nobody wanted to paint. And we went to the party and we didn't paint anybody. So they got mad at me. Oh. And every year after that, they bought, they found their own body painters and they body painted everybody. Because the body painting was my thing. So they oh, so wanted they me to snatch it. Well, yeah, they wanted me to come to the Playboy Mansion and I'll start body painting their people. And because I didn't do that, they just went and did it without me. And they yelled at me and they were mad at me. Oh. And then um, I had these nice friends, these TV producers, they used my name at the Playboy Mansion and got into every party oh. every year while I was in New York. I just went to the Playboy Mansion saying they worked for me. Oh my God. My name was it. pretty good. You could walk in using my name. I, hey, you know what? That's pretty good. I was, yeah. Wow. And now, okay, because I know I'm going to go on and on with you, but to go back to the hat before oh, we take oh, a this break. this big pink hat. This big pink hat. Oh, now, it's on auction now. It's on auction now. And it's November being... 13th. It's on auction. We've got to have it. Rock and roll. They do like Elvis. They auction the Elvis, the John Lennon stuff. Okay. You know, cars, guitars, big things. Wow. So the so the um so it has a minimum bid of fifty thousand and um just a low bid. Just but a worth minimum it. bid. You have worth to worth it. it. I mean I believe it's gonna go for you know, cool mill. So that you know, I mean it could go for, you know, but you have to like really hear like it was on so I was at the Playboy Mansion for um the Halloween party, right. October ninety nine, right? And then I met Quentin Sarantino. So people love this hat. They wanted to try it on. So he put it on and um, Paulie Shore. And, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. And then I, I um, Wycliffe, uh, Jerry Blair, he's a music executive. He worked under Tommy Mottola. So anyway, Jerry had this birthday party. Wycliffe was DJing. And then all of a sudden, Wycliffe is wearing the hat. And then it wound up in the Daily News. Wow. And it's, and to, now if you look, cool hat. Kim Kardashian was on Instagram mimicking your hat and, right. and the look. It's crazy. Uh, People uh -huh. Magazine is featuring Kelly Ripa with her costume in 2003 with your hat. Your hat is everywhere now. 20, 20, 20 years ago. And it is so, the thing. 20 years. I worked so, hard. I worked. I, I mean, I, it wasn't like everything just happened. Like, I worked hard. Like, I. that's where my name Supersonic came from. Like, the shit that work. I did you in, work. like, one day would take somebody else a month, you know, my, my month would take you a year. Like, you know what I mean? Like my year, you it wouldn't even, you know, you couldn't even do it in an entire lifetime. Wow. And so. speaking of an entire lifetime, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and hear some actual more current stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're back. And Ivy, I, you know, I said we were going to talk about more current stuff, but I realized that at the time while you were doing the hats and, and you were around Pam Anderson and you were in California and you created something that you are fighting for to this day. And you've been fighting for a long time. Yes. I created a cartoon called The Scrat. And, um... What happened was um, I saw something in the park which resembled uh, something part squirrel and part rat. And immediately I thought I discovered a new hybrid animal. So I, I saw it. Now, because I'm extremely gifted psychically, I can channel and see things. And, um, you know, I could see the future and I know stuff. So immediately when I saw the scrat, I, I kind of got connected with the sky and like, it was over and like trees and I looked up and I was kind of frozen for 10 minutes and I got this vision, which is a real vision because people could say, you know, like they say how like Kim Kardashian's channeling Pam Anderson. So I don't really know what that means. Like I'm a channeler. So I don't know what, what right, putting right. on makeup and, a, and some hair means that you channeled some shit. I don't know. So anyway, I channeled down that Scrat is worth a hundred million dollars. I got the next Mickey Mouse and, um, you know, I couldn't really try to like tell you like I channeled that or like I'm a psychic or whatever, but I I, I, I told everybody Scratch worth a hundred million dollars. I got the next Mickey Mouse. And the first thing I did was, um, you know, I got, my friend gave me some money. He actually owns the, um, the team, the, uh, Atlanta Hawks right now. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so, so, uh, 
you know, I had all these different partners and different people and, you know, I got a lawyer and, um, you know, the first thing I did was uh, I went to Jones Beach. It was the K-Rock Dysfunctional Family oh, Picnic. Oh, that's right. I forgot you were doing those too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I had all my naked girls and the hats. And, um, you know, Steve Kingston was the head of K-Rock. And they gave me like 28 tickets backstage. And there I am with my girls. And I brought my scrap banner. It was, um, I think it was June 10th, 1999. And uh, I called up Tommy Lee. And I was like, um, you know, I'm back here. And um, there's Fred Durst, that was his friend, and they were, you know, anyway, there was a call and a thing and a schming, and now I'm on stage with Fred Durst with my, you know, naked girls, <laughs> my hats, and uh, my scrap banner, and my Ivy Supersonic banner, and it's all going across the stage, and like, there's like 25,000 people, and we're all on stage with the scrap, and see how this worked out. And um, I saw Ratso Sloman, he wrote the, he actually wrote the Anthony Kiedis book, and um, the Houdini, and how it's oh. and I was like, Ratso, can you write the scrap? You get it, Ratso, scrap, scroll, rat. Anyway, so he came over and he's like, Ivy, you already hired a writer. I was like, I, I did, because I did, I did. I had to deal with this oh, other writer, okay. Nora, but I was like, but you're Ratso, and like, can we work this out? He's like, but you hired someone, and I was like, but you're Ratso. So I, anyway, <laughs> so I pitched the scrap, and um, I pitched it really well. I mean, it reverberated into the universe, like. I kept saying I got the next Mickey Mouse. Now, you have to understand Mickey Mouse was also stolen. So, you got to look up. The New York Post um, last July wrote a story how Mickey Mouse was stolen. So, you could just look that up. Okay. But when I kept saying Mickey Mouse, you know, I got the next Mickey Mouse, I wasn't knowing consciously, psychically, I, I knew I kept saying it. But, um... Mix, so I had the next Mickey Mouse and my scrap was stolen. So anyway, Disney just purchased um, my scrap um, from Fox uh, <laughs> in the $85 billion deal. But I created it. Um, I took it to Tommy Lee. I asked him to be the scrap. I wanted him to star as the scrap to be the voice. He said yes. That I didn't know. Yeah, they just, um, Tommy Lee was subpoenaed last week. He was the first person to get subpoenaed by Fox. 17 years. This lawsuit wow. has been going on since 2002. It's like a boxing match. I'm suing them. They're suing me. I'm suing them. They're suing me. It's a whole big lawsuit. You know, it's like, it's very, like, crazy. So they, they just subpoenaed Tommy Lee. You're the first person that knows that. Wow. You so, heard it here first. <laughs> I mean, you better hurry up and run with that, you know? <laughs> so, um, and I was like, yo, T, like, I didn't subpoena you. Fox subpoenaed you. Like, it's been going on for 17 years. Finally, someone subpoenaed you. Yeah, Tommy Lee, drummer, porn star, you know, Disney, yeah, hey, Disney, right. subpoena, you want, that's what they want, a porn star. Motley Crue! Yeah, I mean, they're going to subpoena him, they're going to ask him, what size are you, were you supposed to be in the scrap voice? Oh my God, yeah. that's crazy! Yeah, because cause what happened was, is that Fox now says, um, they forgot what happened. And now a three-year-old baby has named the scrap. Right, but you've yeah. been posting up different articles, different. Court I've been putting this. I've been putting this stuff. Up. I've been seeing it. Yeah, for, for seventeen years because I know that it'll be stuck in the internet so hard, every single place, everywhere that there's no way to clean this shit up. They can't clean it up. It's uh, it's un. It's like when you when there's a spill, you know, in the water, and they keep you know doing that weird shit. It's gonna bubble up to the surface, and it'll be out of control. Well, that is, and you keep going, and it's funny because I noticed your wardrobe. You have a lot, <laughs> lot of, of scratch shirts, as you should, though, I do, because yeah. it's you, it's your character, well, it's your business. Is, what's it's amazing, your cause. you know, the the head of the vice president of HBO was my partner on Scrap. So in 1999, so what happened was my my father was very mad at me because whatever he was mad at me, but then I said, listen, I was with you know HBO wants my scrap. He was like, what? And then he was then he then he listened when I said HBO likes my scrap and he got we were it. doing a deal. He just stopped what he was doing and said, give me the guy's number. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna do this deal. So I don't know. Fox didn't give a shit. It was a problem because I lived with this hooker. And, um, yeah, I went to LA and there was this wonderful hooker, the best hooker of all of Los Angeles. And I happened to just move in with her because she was pitching my scrat and she was dating Rupert Murdoch's partner and she was Fox's hooker. And, and so I thought we were going to do this deal. I thought it was a, a good thing that the hooker was right. taking my scrat. She took the script. She gave it to Tony Sellers. He was the head of Fox. And then he just took the scrap and he put it into the trailer, into Ice Age. And, and I never it. told the story about the hooker because my father was a lawyer and he owned Silverstein, yes. Awad, and Mikolos. And I didn't want to ruin the law firm. I didn't want to ruin my father's reputation. 
you know, because he said, is, is, I said she's a masseuse. He said, you mean hooker? So I was like, oh, is that how do you know? saying masseuse? Yeah, I didn't know. How, yeah. how do you know these things, Daddy? I don't know. He was a guy. I guess he knew something. He knew. I didn't, I didn't want to be mad at me, and I didn't want to ruin his law firm, so obviously they wanted Nicholas. So, wow. So, okay. Now we're going to take a break from scratch. Okay. And then we are going to come Just back. Just so you know, there are, there's, <laughs> there's like 23 subpoenas going out to like heads of all companies. Like crazy. William Morris. I mean, the owner of the, the team, the Atlantic Hawks. Yeah. Tommy Lee. I mean, these are this great subpoenas. The, oh, the director of Donald Trump Apprentice is getting, he got the subpoena too. Oh my gosh. It's so I, cool. Yeah. It, it You're the end. first to know. It, You're the first to know. I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm honored. Yeah, I'm honored. And now we're going to come back and talk about current events. Snoop Dogg's um, pot grinder. Oh my God! From the um, July '99 photo shoot, because he, he left it in the hotel, and it, it's like it looks like a grinder for the coffee beans. Oh and my um, I he left it there, so I, I took it, and the photographer was like, "Ivy, that's uh, that's your pot, Snoop's pot grinder." So I don't know. I just took it. He said, "Take it, take it, to take it home." So so it was sitting in my closet for 20 years. And when I was packing to move, I was like, "What am I going to do with this pack grinder?" And then I, I was like, "Ed, I got that pack grinder from the Snoop Dogg shoot. You know, from Snoop's hotel from the we're at the Millennium." And it, he's like, "Yeah, I could auction it." I was like, "Okay." Hold on one second, Snoop. I have her phone number. Call me. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. I'm sorry. I love Snoop Dogg. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So now, here we are. You recently moved out of Manhattan, but you you were painting in Manhattan. I was. I started December nineteenth. Oh, that's right. You December nineteenth of of two thousand sixteen. Two thousand and sixteen. And you, my first painting. Uh, can I say fuck fuck box? <laughs> How oh, <laughs> is that crazy? Yeah. yeah, that was your first painting. And look what it's led to. Because you know, I took yeah. some pictures of the paintings you have. We were talking about them and, and, and seeing the things that come out of them for I don't even know how long before we even started talking on camera. And what you did, though, besides the fact that people commented to you, I believe, first, oh, I see this, oh, mm -hmm. I see that. And now you're telling me that they seem to, they paint themselves for the most part. <laughs> Most, well, well, I mean, I, I paint for a little paint while, them, but... and then I look and I, I just keep seeing things like manifest. It's almost like, it's almost like if it's like an invisible, we're going to call it the invisible. It's like, it's like, it's like the invisible has like rolled around on the canvas and like left its mark. It's, it, let me tell you, like, it's just, they're, they're astonishing. They really are. They're astonishing. I, I walked in and was struck immediately by them and you know every one we looked at we saw something different well i mean every painting is different but i think you get what i mean yeah we just kept seeing different things and the the best part about it not only is it great art that you have is you took this art and you turned it into your next venture yeah, yeah thank you yeah 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 and yeah. it's really cool. Tell, how did you decide, oh, I'm going to make a movie? Because what we're talking about is Ivy's Paranormal, which is a documentary. And it just made its debut at the... It was the um, Cutting Room uh, International Short Film Festival. And I won for uh, Best Short Documentary. And um, I, I can't really recall if I've ever won an award 
before. Oh, wow. I don't know. I, I don't remember. I mean, I won this award and um, it was so exciting, really. Um, I mean, when, when the painting started to paint themselves, it was a little nerve wracking because I didn't really, I didn't know what that was. And um, I mean, I know I channel, but I could see things in my apartment um, doing things and changing and showing faces. And I, so I started, you know, photographing and like, there was like a, um, a like this big Native American animal. What, 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 like, cause it's not like a, it's big. It was, it's was it a, oh, like a bull, a bull, like a, like a bison, no, like a, a bison. Buffalo? It was the bison buffalo. Oh. He was in my closet. So, I mean, I had skirts and furs and all kinds of hundreds of pieces of clothing, but it was just that big animal. Like I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I see you there. But then I was like looking at my, you know, I designed these far bras and I just could see it turn into this thing. And I was like, okay, I know you're, you're the fur bra. Like I know I'm okay and I know I'm fine and I'm not tripping and like I'm stuff is going on in here. And like, I'm I okay. So but you're okay. It started with my, um, you know, a, a photograph of my, my dog that passed away cutie. And, um, she was really my ex-boyfriend's dog, but she was really, you know, my girl. Mm -hmm. And um, she used to, I would pet her and she would purr like a cat and make these alien sounds. And I was like, someone's stuck in your body. You're not really a dog, are you? You're a wizard. And, um, and I love this dog. I mean, she was a magic dog. And then as soon as she died, I don't know, my life had really changed. <laughs> Obviously, so wow. I was petting her picture because I thought that's what I should do that maybe she could feel it or she could hear me or see me and then all of a sudden um, as I was petting her picture, um, which I guess could be strange, all of a sudden a little alien popped out of her ear and um, oh, I saw that and a picture and a hand then the hand jumped out and I was like, oh, this is way too much for me. I don't know what that means, what that is. So I showed it to my neighbor and she said to me, her name is Sheila Marsh. And she said to me, well, maybe it means like, mommy, I can hear you. So she totally changed my, just that one person changed my whole life because, you know, I could have been paranoid. I could have gone into a panic. I could have thought, I don't know. I could have told the wrong person. Right. They would have said the wrong thing to me. So that one small thing, you know, it was just life changing. I showed it to my neighbor and she, she said obviously wow. the right thing that changed my life because it could have been very different. You know what I mean? She told me what it was. She and she and that was what it was. The dog could hear me. Wow, that's cool. I mean, yeah, it's so that's why I tell people now, like always talk to your people. Like I had so many people that died: my father, my mother, my stepmother, my uncle. I mean, it was my boyfriend, his mother, my webmaster. Like I mean, all a lot of best friends. I mean, this is like this long running list, and um, I just really thought like people kind of. Um, you know, death is not the end. They just kind of quantum jump. They just jump. They just jump dimensions. Like they are still here. They can see me. They can hear me. Um, but we're not taught how to communicate with them. So they don't, I mean, no one taught me how to communicate with somebody in a different dimension. I have to make it up. I got to figure it out. Okay. Now, is that <laughs> what your movie Yeah. Well, about? Well, as soon as the painting started to paint themselves, like I, I brought a painting, I brought the painting over to my rabbi. I said, do you see this? Do you see? He's like, he could see it all, but he didn't know what it was. And he didn't really know who, what to do. So I brought it to Curtis Blow, who he was the creator of like hip hop or something, you know, like Curtis Blow, you know, these are the, the great- The name she drops, yeah, just, okay. Curtis Sorry. Blow. So I said, Curtis Blow, he's like a, like a minister, or like, I know, like he's like I a preacher know. or a priest, a guy, he's like the dude. Curtis, show me, what is, what is, do you see this? He goes, well, you've been anointed. So I was like, anointed? I don't even know what that is. He's like, you're anointed. So my friend, she knows, she's church going. She told me what it means. And um, so said, I'll take you. Um, he took me to like the guy who started the hip hop church. And um, so he blessed me. And um, and anyway, so then I, I went back to church without Curtis. And um, what was I with Curtis? I, I don't know. So I was holding the Bible and it started to vibrate in my hands. So I was like, oh my God, I better go home. I'm going to start painting. And then all of a sudden, Jesus was in my painting. Like he was like in this red Jesus outfit. I don't know, red wow. outfit, Jesus. And then like angels. And I was like, I know what that is. I see it. I know. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it was really hard to believe like this could even happen.
But in the truth of it, I feel like I just graduated this lifetime. Like I'm just a graduate of this lifetime. I have done so much. I have seen so much. I've I, I did it all. I, there's nothing, I mean, I did it all. I'm a, I'm a graduate. Well, speaking of did it all, though. So now you won this award. Uh-huh. <laughs> first time you screened this movie. Yeah. And now you're going to show it on November 20th here in, in Great, Great Neck. Neck. At the Great Neck Squire. Yeah, which I'll tell you what's so cool about it is that in, in 1990, I started this jean company, IBIV Jeans. Right. And I was designing the jeans in my bedroom and I started them like in Maryland in college. And anyway, in three months, I, I whatever I did, I, I went up on the cover of Women's Wear Daily and I, the whole marketplace changed. <laughs> I changed like, the, whole, the whole marketplace. Now everybody was doing my jeans and like, I was like, how can I keep up with you billionaires? So anyway. So now I'm like back in Great Neck. I've been here three months because I was like, that's my, that's my thing. You know, three months. October 20th was the day I won the award. Yes. I just told you three months. July, July to August to September. Anyway, it was 90 motherfucking days and I won the goddamn award on that exact day. I told you that. I told you. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I did it. I won the award. I did it in three months living in Great Neck. Crazy. So I was like, I got to get back. I got to get to the theater because, um... So the premise of the movie is that my father died and like, you know, I wasn't gonna give up on him because he, he would never give up on me. So I didn't give up on him and I seemed to open up all these other worlds, like trying to find him. Mm -hmm. So I'm back in Great Neck where I grew up, like down the block and now the movie's really about, you know, I was looking for my dad and I found him. And um, so now, <laughs> you know what I mean? I grew up in Great Neck yeah. and his office was in Great Neck and now I'm gonna go show my movie at the Great Neck at Squire Theater. And you're also going to show it after it shows in Great Neck on November 20th at the Squire Theater. Well, I'm going to go back to LA. Now I'm going to go to LA because I've been trying to get back there for three years. But what happened was I, I left LA, I came to, back to New York and I was about to like pack my stuff and go back and then the paintings. The painting started and I couldn't, I couldn't just ignore it. So I had to go with it. I was like, I don't know, is it my magic apartment? Like, what's going on? Wow. But, so I, I I went to Frank Andrews, this uh, world-renowned psychic. He predicted John Lennon's death. And um, and um, he told me I was channeling Picasso. So when he when you tell me I'm channeling Picasso, you don't got to tell me that twice. I was like, I'm going to hire uh, the HBO documentary guy. And let's start, dude. Let's go. Let's film and right now. I did it. I did and it. Did and, it. and I put it in the festival, and I won. And um, maybe I'm not supposed to change the film. It's only 17 and a half minutes. Which is actually, well, it's a short. It's a yeah. short. Well, I'd like to make it a long. I'd like, I mean, I have like all this footage, like so many hours and hours. I'd like to make I it a long. I can't imagine you have a lot of hours of footage. You don't talk at all. I mean, it's like 50, I take like 50 people from the rabbi to the, you know, there's a lot of people on the tape. It. So now let me ask you something. Well, now I could go back to LA and I have a oh, movie. Right. Like, because LA is about the movies. It is about movie the movie business. Movies. And, and, and I got it. Ivy's Paranormal. It's a movie. Ivy's Paranormal. Yeah. That's I can't wait to see it. I'm going to see it November 20th. Yeah. And now if people want to look for you, check you out, I mean, you have a ton of, but is there a best website, no, a best no, way to find no, there's you? There's no, there's no, because my website fell down. It was like, it was no. like thousands of, well, you know, if you go there, it's still there, but there were thousands of pages. And uh, there was like, well, whatever. There's so much. There's so much. Look so for much. Google Ivy Supersonic because you will not not find this woman. She is everywhere. She has done so many things in her lifetime. And she's going to keep Instagram, on doing Instagram. them. Instagram. So the Instagram, I oh, think, Instagram, is it Ivy Instagram. Supersonic or is it Ivy Silverstein? It's, it's a combination. It's, it's I'll put it in all. I'll yeah. put it up. Oh, good. I'll, yeah. I'll put it up. I think yeah. it's Ivy Silver, Silverstein. So when you look, I mean, I post a lot of pictures with... These psychic photos because my photos change. All the photos change. So, you know, it's just so crazy. I have, you know, maybe you don't know what you're looking at, but if you don't want that photo, swipe. Go to, the next go to the next one. Go to the next one. Check this woman out. I, I actually, next I met her last is. year. I adored her the, as soon as I met her. She, yeah, this she designed. She designed the necklace. Necklaces. I mean, it's just, yeah. it doesn't stop. But she's got the, a good soul and is doing such interesting things now. Yes. And I just... <laughs> interesting. Have you not heard her who she's name dropping, for God's sake? So, <laughs> I, 
Ivy, thank you so much for talking Kate to Fox. us. I want to just tell you about the name Kate Fox. Before we go any further, I just got to tell you the one thing. So in my movie is Shannon Taggart. Shannon just came out with a book called Seance. And um, the forward is done by the guy in the Ghostbusters movie. What's his name? I don't know. The main guy. He's in Ghostbusters. He's very famous. Ernie Hudson. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Okay. He wrote the forward. <laughs> anyway, she had a whole New York Times article about her yesterday. You can look it up. Shannon Taggart. I mean, long, long. Anyway, Shannon Taggart, I met her in Lilydale. It's, uh, in, it's like in Buffalo, all the mediums from the 1800s. I mean, it's been going on and on. And it was really founded by the Fox sisters. And they would do like a little rap and then uh, there would be a rap back. Anyway, the Fox sisters, Kate Fox. And, um, and then all of a sudden, I mean, the synchronicity, here's Kate Fox. Just so you know that in the 1800s, there was a lady named Kate Fox who led this, the um, whole spiritual movement. So now you know. Check out Ivy Supersonic. <laughs> the woman of many hats.